Welcome to the Resilient Mindset Podcast, an exciting new podcast by Resilience Queen, Justine Martin. Justine is the owner and founder of the Resilient Mindset, a division of the Justine Martin Corporation. Justine draws on her years of experience and knowledge, consulting with clients to develop and sustain a positive mindset. Focused on igniting your passion, purpose and power, follow the Resilience Queen each week as she delves into the mind of her guests, exploring fascinating stories and inspiring journeys. Hello listeners, today we've got Les Watson. Les has worked extensively throughout Australia and Southeast Asia, running dynamic training programs that have produced measurable results for large corporations, small businesses and individuals. Les's depth of knowledge and skill come from over 30 years of experience as a trainer, speaker and facilitator in self-management, motivation and communication techniques. Because of his passion and expertise in time management, Les has earned the nickname Time Lord. He owns and runs two companies, Get More Time and Creating Success Coaching. Les is based in Geelong, Victoria, Australia. Welcome, Les. Thanks, Justine. Nice to be here. So, Les, let's get straight into it today. What does resilience mean to you? I would say for me, resilience is the ability to stick at it, just the ability of life happening and not letting the downs keep you down. Resilience is keeping on keeping on. Resilience is bouncing back. Resilience is not letting the turkeys get you down all those sorts of things that that there are times in life where people get stuck and they go, well, I just can't bounce back out of this. And I'm going, yeah, I think you can. And that's where resilience comes in, where you bounce back, where you have the opportunity to go, you know, I'm going to give it another crack. The old saying is that you can get knocked down nine times but get up ten, and that's resilience. That's That's resilience. That's right. Great, great um, definition there on resilience, Les. Mm. So what's an adversity that you faced and how did you draw on your own resilience to cope? I suppose the easiest one to describe is my business in uh, way back in the day. I actually had a training company and uh, through a lack of knowledge ran it into the ground. And the uh, it was just unfortunate. I just didn't have the knowledge to do what I needed to do in business. And um, I probably would have told you this before, Justine, that, the, that someone once said they, they don't work with people that haven't cycled once. And that's not cycling on a bicycle. That's actually mm-hmm. uh, going belly up or going broke. Now, I didn't go broke, but I let the company go. And I learned a huge lesson from my my mistakes from my failures from those things that didn't work for me in in small business and that's the biggest one for me of actually having my beloved company in sydney actually i had to close it down i had to stop i had to walk away i had to stop trading and uh, and that hurt a lot um and I'm sure you've got another question in there somewhere, but but, but in fact, I'm. How go- did you cope? How did you cope with with coming back from that, Liz? Because I mean, you're a successful businessman now, and you know a lot of people would throw the towel in and say, "I'm going to go and work for someone else, and I'm never going to start my own business again, and I'm a failure, and I'm this, and I'm that." So, how did you build your resilience and, and cope? Uh, with that because that would have been a very testing and trying time first of all i needed to stop i needed to relax relax i needed to reset and i actually needed to go and do something completely different and that was go back to my first uh uh what was it my first love probably my first love in hospitality and um being a uh, a person in hospitality so i was in corporate hospitality and I did that for many years. And then I left Sydney, came down here to Geelong. And a good friend of mine said, you need to start your business back up again. And I went, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. And, um, and they pushed. So your question around how did it come about that I, that I bounced back? 
Mm. I took time to heal, number one. Yes. So a lot of people think that they can just jump off the horse and jump back on again. And I'm, I'm, I would question that. I would say that maybe that's not the best thing to do. Maybe it's time to take stock and lick your wounds and just let it settle so that you solidify the lessons that you learn from that mistake. And I did that for quite a few years. So when so that, that comes under self-care then. Oh, very much so. Very much yeah. so. So when my friend said, you need to relaunch your business, I've gone, I'm not so sure about that. And they went, yeah, what you have, people in the region need. So mm -hmm. I believed in myself enough, but I also took the feedback of somebody else that said, yep. you can do this. And they didn't say it in that, in that terminology, but they believed in me enough to say, no, the, your material and your knowledge is needed in this region, relaunch. And I've gone, okay. And I trusted them. I, I really trusted them. We worked very closely together. And if they said, uh, it's time to go and do this, I'd go, okay, let's go. So if she said, relaunch your business, I'm going, okay, I better relaunch my business. We did branding. We did the whole lot. And really, it was a very solid base that I then launched into this new business and took all of the past failures and learnings and brought them to the fore and bounced back. Awesome. So you became more pliable as well with the knowledge that you uh, had learnt from the failed business and then bringing it back into um, the new one, but changing things and doing things differently in order to create that success. Yeah, very much so. And just the knowledge, you don't know what you don't know. That's so right. I didn't know. I didn't have people around me. So the stuff that you and I talk about around support, I didn't have the support in Sydney. I was trying to do it on my own. I wasn't That's the biggest failure that a lot of people make, um, not just in business but uh, in everyday life, is that they don't ask for help. That, yeah. um, that help, that support, um, outsourcing, all of that. Yep. Um, you can't do absolutely everything yourself. Yeah. Um, in order to gain the resilience, uh, you need to do ask for help for certain things. Yep. And, and you and I have been working together now for many years and we bounce off each other. So I'll come to you and go, what about this? You'll come to me and go, well, what about this? And then we've got people around us that are in a very similar mindset. Mm. Very and, and that's mindset. very important uh, with resilience as well is to, and I say this all the time, you are the sum of the five people that you hang around yep. and um, hence why you and I bounce off each other all the time. But it is really important to get mm. your own tribe yep. and that will help build your own resilience um, as well. And it doesn't happen over, oh, I'm on a tribe, good luck. It doesn't yeah. happen over, oh, surely I, oh. it's been a week. Why haven't I got a tribe? It doesn't work like that. It took me no. years, and I'm sure it took you years as well. That's right. So, That's that, right. so that if you want to create people around you that support you in your endeavours, then look around. Look around. Find out the people of the same interest. Find out the people that speak the same language. And I say that in, in a business sense. Find out the people that have... Uh, business networks. So go and network with people and ask them what's mm. going on with them, what's happening with them. And for some of those, you're going to end up, see, when you and I met, Justine, we met in one setting and yet we're on the back end, we're doing something completely different together. That's exactly and, right. And yet it was that initial meeting that enabled us to at least have that spark that here we are years later still working with each other. That's right. That's that's exactly right. I mean, I I've got some very close friends in my life that I I've met in a toilet at a pub. What? Uh, so you know, people come from everywhere in your life, and uh, you know, you <laughs> be, be open to your tribe. I love so. it. I love that story. That's great. I met them in a the toilet. What? <laughs> I know, I know, right? So would you say that your biggest failure to date would be that business? Oh, definitely, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, it, it hurt. It really hurt. And 
I I smarted. I went away. I licked my wounds, and I let mm. I like uh, even to the point where I had a filing cabinet full of stuff, and I tossed the majority of the filing cabinet, like all of my knowledge, I tossed it away. Wow! And it was the written knowledge, not the internal. Like I mm. I laid it down, and I went, no, nah, I'm probably never going to go back there. It hurt so much. So why would I hang on to the stuff? And now the uh, material I have comes out of experience and out of not just a book, it comes out of experience. So I've been able to, uh, as you know, Justine, we've been able to put it into video. So I have almost a right. hundred videos now that I speak what's true for me in the situation. And someone once said, there's nothing new under the sun. So the stuff that I'm, that I actually present is not new. It's not about being new. What's your spin? What's the Justine spin? What's the Les spin? And you put that spin on top, you put that flavour on top, you put that colour on top, and that's what makes you, you. That's right, because not everyone relates to to every single person. So, yeah. again, like finding your tribe, you've got to find someone that is relatable to you in order to learn. Yep. Because if you don't relate to that person, it makes it extremely difficult to finish the task. So whether it's a course that you're doing or a, a degree or a new hobby even. Yep. You know, if you don't like the person that's teaching that hobby, well, then you're not going to learn from it and you're not going to take it in. You're not going to like it. No. So, and, that, and that thing around support, um, again, I, I've told you around the, the ESI model that I have. In fact, I've probably got something here as an ESI model. You have, um, yes. The ESI, the S in that is support. And it, I am not immune to this sort of stuff. I need to reach out and ask for support and uh, and allow the support in. So recently I had a situation where my wife got really ill. So I'm going, well, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm, I'm stoic. I can do it. And then I went, wait a minute, <laughs> you teach this stuff. Let the people that love you support you. That's just, right. just let them in, Les. And I've gone, oh, I need to let people in. So um, someone said, can I, can I help you out? And I rang them. And I said, well, the, Mary's taken a turn. And I'll take you up on that offer. And they said, mm-hmm. what's your address? Let me throw a meal at you. So they, they brought a meal around. And, and that's, that's, it's big for people, mm-hmm. but it's particularly big for men because they don't, it's like they're the ones that normally have to carry the weight. So for us to back yeah. off and go, no, someone else can carry the weight. I need to be the one supported right now. It's, uh, it's a scary thing. So it, even me, I I still need support of the people around me, and that was. Oh a look, classic. we all we all do. Yeah, we all definitely do, and that's what helps build resilience. Nice. So then, the next time you're faced with an adversity, you do have your support network in place that you can then pick up the phone and say, "I need a hand. I need help. I need this, or I need that." Yep. And um, your tribe. Uh, you know, will help you uh, mm. with it. So, I mean, there's many different layers to resilience and there's many different things that help build that resilience and, and that's just one of them. Indeed, so, yep. So who are your role models in resilience that have resilience? Who inspires you? There, there's a, a couple of people that inspire me and uh, my wife is one because of her ability to overcome the things that have happened in her life and come out the other side and take what it was that was a heartbreak in her life and really hone it and um, be able to not only get on top of it, but then use it to inspire others. So my wife, Mary Mary Watson. So there's number one. My kids. Who, who is a... Uh, world-renowned author. Yes, she award-winning, award-winning author. She there won the New South Wales Writer Centre one year and got shortlisted for the Victorian Premier's Literary Award. So, what she writes has uh, has quite good merit. Yes. And her book is called Antonio's Seed, Seed. by right. Mary Watson. So, if you want a copy of that? Let me know. However, <laughs> uh, my wife. So, my wife's number one. My kids, um, their ability to overcome adversity. Uh, again, uh, there are many, many, many um, famous people that I could that I could talk about. But just bringing it home to the ones that I love, um, 
my daughter overcoming a huge amount in her life to to create the life that she wants. My son, again, uh, his ability to bounce back and and be the Watson that uh, that he is 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 amazing, absolutely amazing. And they are the they are the closest to me now. If I was just to go one level outside of those closest to me, and this may be a shock, Justine, but you are one of those people who I, I put on that pedestal. Why? Because of your ability to bounce back from the setbacks of life. And you've had a stack. Now, I know that you're going to at some point actually put out a little bit about uh, your story, yes. but it inspires me. Every time I hear it, every time you mention something, it just grabs me and I go, that's absolutely amazing. So you, you, are, you are an inspiration, Justine. Thank you, Les. Thank you. So, Les, uh, what are some of your passions in life? My relationship with my wife is a passion, and it sounds weird, but we've now been married for 30 years. and That's it, a milestone in itself. It gets better every day. Mm -hmm. I, um, I finish my day by saying to my wife, oh, it even gets me, just saying it, Thanks for being my wife. And Aww. she goes, thanks for being my husband. Um, That's so, beautiful. <laughs> and and it's, it's just lovely. We, we, we have the best relationship uh, out of anybody we know, and we work it. We really, really work it. Mm. A lot of personal development in the day, and uh, we don't let sleeping dogs lie, and we talk a lot. And uh, I, My I'll, nana always used to say, never let the sun set on an argument. The key to indeed. a long, healthy relationship, never let that sun set. Perfect. And I'll, I'll let you in on here's, – here's a great story. And I, I, I may have told you this story before, however – Course it's just we'll share it. Just just because it's you and me, Justine, yeah. for nobody else. That's right. No um, one else. No, is one no, no one else. Um, <laughs> there was a time, <laughs> and here I am being the aware person, done all this personal development. Uh, there was a time when my wife said, "We need to, we need to talk. Let's go." So we were on this walk, and she goes, "I'm getting more intimacy from my girlfriends than I am from my husband." <laughs> You have told me this, before. and I'm going. What? I don't understand. Now I don't. It doesn't. Oh, it just was such a a slap of the big fish across the face. I've gone. I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. So we really worked that. Like it, it was a shock mm -hmm. to me. I thought I was doing everything, and yet I was doing uh, not almost mm -hmm. nothing. But but I wasn't giving in the direction of, of what she needed. So. Uh, I soon fixed that. But, again, it was a, a great bounce back from what could have been a disaster, whereas in that open communication I was able to bounce back, be resilient, not go and hide under a rock, not go down the pub, not not actually turn to any addictive substances, but go, no, let's hash this out. Let's, let's, I want to work on this. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better husband. So, um, again, we worked it, and uh, 30 years later, here we are. That's amazing. Okay, so, Les, um, I've got a couple of spur-of-the-moment questions for you tonight. Oh, I'm so scared. Go <laughs> on, go on. Okay, do you eat pineapple on pizza? Yes, let's go. Yum, you're a man after my own heart. Um, okay, does the loo roll hang forwards or backwards? Forward. Awesome. That's two out of two for me. Yeah. See, see that that one that one comes from my butler, the butler training in me. So, so it's oh, got to, it got to hang forward. Nice. I, I'm that bad. We keep going back to the toilet topic today, but I'm that bad when I go to someone's toilet if it's hanging the other way, I turn the roll over because my OCD is like, no, that's the wrong way. Yeah, and I'm on client <laughs> sites a lot, so I do the same thing. It's the wrong way. Put it around the wrong way. Yep. Um, if you had to work and didn't need the money, what would you do? If I had to work and didn't need the money, what would I do? Yeah. I'd do what I'm doing. I, I'm, an, I'm an educator. Um, I, I love people. I work with people. Uh, heavily involvement in the amount of uh, associations around there's something in Torquay that I'm involved with, Torquay Commerce or Commerce Tor Torquay, uh, the John Chamber of Commerce, uh, my church, heavy involvement in church. So I'd keep doing what I'm doing and do the business at the same time. 
because um, it's not about the money. It's about helping people. That's right. And you do help quite a lot of people. Thank you. What do you think of when you're alone in the car? When I'm alone in the car, where's my wife? No. Um, what am I doing here on my Besides own? Besides chatting to me on the phone when, when <laughs> you're in your car, Liz. <laughs> that happens. Um, <laughs> so for me, when I'm alone, it, it's I have a, a very productive, <laughs> both you and me, very productive brains and very we it goes and goes and goes. So I'm always looking for what's the next opportunity, how can I take the learning out of what I've just done or what I'm about to go or what is the marketing opportunity. So part of part of me is all about marketing. And I may not be the best marketer, but I do have some great ideas and I help people around their marketing to break them out of what they what they may be stuck with. So I love marketing. I think marketing is just um, a, a fascinating topic. So I, I often think about marketing and what the messages people are, are putting forward and, and all of those sorts of things. So for me, marketing. Awesome. When you're not talking to me on the phone. Exactly. Or writing your pushback and talking to me on the phone. <laughs> Shh, <laughs> don't tell people. I'm not. I'm just talking to you. Yeah, just us <laughs> Okay, and my last question, what part of the human face do you like? Lips, lips, the tip of the lips. Love the tip <laughs> of the lips. Uh, there's, the lips are one that said, see, you brought my, uh, the topic again of my wife, but it, it, it's uh, the eyes, the eyes are the windows of the soul. How's that? How's yeah. that for a quote? That's a nice save. Incredible quote. <laughs> okay, Liz, uh, how can people contact you? Uh, my website, getmoretime.com.au, getmoretime.com.au, um, and that's on the productivity and the time management side. I've got creatingsuccesscoaching.com.au as well, and uh, I, I did want to make an offer if yes, those, those – I'd love to hear your offer. Yeah, those people that uh, get to listen to this, if you would like a free copy of my book, Get Back an Hour Every Day – all you need to do is go to the website and or this address, which would be getmoretime.com.au forward slash resilience and just fill in your details and I will send you off a copy, an ebook, a digital copy, a PDF copy of my book, Get Back an Hour and Every Day. Normally it's $24.95. I know because so, I bought it. Yes. <laughs> So you're all getting it for free and I have to pay for it. How does that work? No, I don't know. You're just generous. That's why. So And I bought the hard copy oh, as well. And it's so. a good hard copy. And it's signed as well. So, oh, I know you autographed it. So if you wanna if you wanna buy the, the big book, then that's uh forty nine ninety five. But you. but you can get a free version of mm -hmm. Get Back an Hour and Every Day as the PDF version just by going to getmoretime.com.au forward slash resilience. And I'd recommend uh, definitely downloading that um, or getting the opportunity to do your Get More Time uh, uh, course that you run. I've done it three times now and my productivity level has gone through the roof because Love of it. it. Love so it. I, I wouldn't be where I am today unless I'd actually done some of your courses. So Thanks, Justine. Thank you, Les. You're welcome. Anyway, uh, thank, you for, thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure as always chatting to you. And, um, yeah, if you need to get some more time in your life or you want to create some success, uh, contact Les. Wonderful. Anyway, thanks for your insight into what resilience means to you. I love it. Thanks, Justine. You're welcome.